So everyone, today was a wild day for Apple. We had the official release of iOS 16.4 to the entire public, which we do have a video on, which I'll link down below. We also had 16.5 beta one release, which we're working on a video to explain everything. And then we got Apple Classical final release to everybody, as well as Apple's new buy now, pay later platform to help you get into even further debt, but courtesy of Apple this time. But in this video, what I wanna talk about is Apple Music Classical, what it entails, why they added a separate application totally, separate from the actual music application, who can use it and actually how much it costs overall and what plans you can get for it. Because at the end of the day, if you are a classical music lover and love to listen to classical music, this is gonna be the app for you. But without further ado, let's talk about Apple Music Classical. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video and talk about Apple Music Classical, what it is, who can use it, how you get it, and everything that comes with Apple Music Classical. So the first thing to talk about Apple Music Classical, and the first time we got an inkling of it, is that back in 2021, Apple actually acquired the classical music app called Primephonic, which focused on this exact situation, right? High quality streaming of actual classical music, and not just different renditions by different composers. It's classical music brought to you by the actual composer overall in a very high quality stream. So first off, to get it very simple, just go into the App Store, search for the classical music application, and now if you are a subscriber of Apple Music, of Apple One, or of any of Apple's streaming services that revolves around the music application, then this will be free to use or included as anybody else would say because it's not free to use but if you are subscribed to apple music or you are subscribed to apple one which is their kind of all-encompassing service then apple music classical will come included so once you're there the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get this splash screen so apple music classical is going to greet you and say welcome to the app designed for classical included with an apple music subscription at no extra cost which again is kudos by apple they're adding more value at the same price point until they raise the price but that is good for Apple for at least right now. And one thing that I will mention about this is that right now there's only an iOS app, meaning there's no dedicated iPad app, no dedicated Mac OS app, there's no dedicated CarPlay app either, and it's only gonna be for iPhone and iOS. Now you don't need to be on 16.4 or the latest version. You will be able to use it as long as you can kind of go into the app store and download it. So you don't need the latest software to use it. But now that we got that out of the way, let's dive right into the app itself. So we go into classical right here. And now keep in mind that myself, I'm not a classical music listener to begin with. So this is kind of out of my realm, but I did want to walk you guys through the actual app, the UI, what you can look forward to and what it actually all entails. So first off, you have very similar to the regular Apple Music application. You got four menu buttons on the bottom down here. This is your welcome screen. So you have the listen now section. So exclusive albums, they have your introduction right here, Beethoven's Piano Concerto number one, and it goes on and on. You have your recently played right here. You actually have periods and genres, so it's split up and categorized that way. You have exclusive albums that are exclusive to Apple Classical. You also have some new releases here. So it's not just the old school stuff by like Beethoven and stuff like that. It's also new releases and things from up and coming composers to give them, a, I guess, a space to actually share their music digitally in high quality and not kind of search for one song and then have 50 different renditions on a Spotify or Apple Music. And then you have your browse section here. So your browse section is broken up into three parts. You have your catalog, your playlist, and your instruments. So you can literally just look up by instruments. So if you want to listen to something purely by piano, you can search it right there. The organ, the cello, guitar, the double bass, your wind instruments like the recorder even maybe we could listen to some hot cross buns but that is all there you also have opera music so you have soprano mezzo soprano and you're able to listen to these different types of like like you see right here a bass baritone so you're able to listen to all this classical music not only from an instrument standpoint but also from a vocal standpoint now, as of right now, Apple is mentioning that at launch, so today when it launches on March 28th, it's going to have a catalog of up to 5 million tracks and thousands of exclusive albums, which are exclusive to Apple Music Classic. And then you can also see it broken down by Apple Playlist. So you have Composer Essentials, Artist Essentials, and it keeps going on there. You can also have your overall catalog, so you can search by Composer, by Period, so you have Bach right there, Beethoven, Wolfgang, Mozart, and then you have Conductors, Soloists, Choirs, Ensembles, and the list goes on. So this is kind of the only way right now to at least easily, I'm gonna say easily because it's available to the masses. So for anybody to pick up their iPhone, open up this application and be able to immediately go into this application and listen to whatever you want to. Then you have your library section. So this works very similar to how Apple Music works. So if you are an Apple Music user, then you are pretty familiar on how this actually works. So let's say if I go into browse, let's go into listen now, I'm gonna make sure my volume is down so we don't get copyrighted. So if I wanna listen to this, I'll play this right now. And then the options you have here, are add to library, add to playlist, and then also show the recording. And then from here, it also, you can actually go back to the album. So it's all the same thing there. But like I said, you can just add it to your library. You can add it to a playlist as well. So you can create your playlist. 
So that's good to go. And that's how you organize it inside of your library. So now I can go to albums and you can see that the song is right there. And then obviously you also have your search button here so you can type in whatever you want and see. So if I wanna type in, you know, Bach right here, press search, see what comes up. Box shows up and then you can start to see their popular works and how it's broken down into so many iterations so you have over a thousand iterations of this song you can play it from the 2014 track 1965 2009 so again different renditions but much better organized overall and it still works with dynamic islands so you can see up there that we have the long press here you're able to see all the information that you need so if you're into all that shortcut stuff then by all means that is included now, some of the things that Apple touts about the Apple classical music is that it is the highest audio quality up to 192 kilohertz and 24-bit high-res lossless audio. So you can use Dolby Atmos, as you can see right here, and lossless audio, as long as it has that badge right there, it will allow you to play it in that fashion. It also has thousands of recordings in immersive spatial audio. So if you're into spatial audio, maybe you got the brand new Era 300. I know Steven Robles from the Apple Insider is definitely playing that classical music on his new Era 300, but that is all included inside of Apple Classical built in. And also another thing to tout is just how you organize everything and how everything is so easily searchable compared to any other application or compared to just the internet overall, right? You get complete and accurate metadata to make sure you know exactly what works and which artist is playing it. You also have thousands of editorial notes, including composer biographies, descriptions of key works, and a lot more. So if I go here to Yo-Yo Ma, press on more, you get all this information on Yo-Yo Ma, which is great to see. So if you want to get a little bit of info on him, then by all means, go for it. And you can continue to search that with pretty much any composer that's on here. And then one of the last things I do want to show is just what it looks like to go into the Listen Now tab. So this is what you're listening to. You have your three dot options right here. So you have your add to library, add to playlist, share album, show album. You have your info right here, which gives you all the information, like I mentioned earlier, all the metadata associated with this actual song and this composition. You have your airplay button right here, and then you have a list of what's playing next. So if you want to queue up some different songs, again, very similar to Apple Music. So if you're familiar with Apple Music, the actual UI in the interface is going to be very familiar. It's just now tailored to a completely different genre. And then one last thing to mention that I noticed is that you can actually, they, it kind of works with the regular music application, but from one way and not the other way. So let's say you wanna actually save this song and then you wanna have it all under one application. So let's say I go right here, let's save this song, add it to a playlist, we'll save it to the classic playlist. So now it's saved there, but now let's say you wanna go to your Apple Music app because you also like music that's on the Apple Music application, you can go to your playlist, that playlist exists now inside of Apple Music. So you don't have to go to different applications every single time you wanna to listen to a different genre. Now it doesn't go vice versa. So if you wanna maybe create a playlist on Apple Music and then have it show up on the classical app, that's not gonna work. But whatever you do on the classical app will work on Apple Music to make everybody's life easier to not have to go through two different applications to listen to one song. And then that's pretty much all we have with the classical music application. I'm a fan of it. If you guys listen to classical music, then you're gonna be a fan of it as well. Definitely give it a try. I'm gonna link it down in the description if you guys wanna check it out. If you already are an Apple Music subscriber or an Apple One subscriber, this is gonna come at no additional cost, but let's finish up this video. So that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, the kind of synopsis of this application is that outside of being physically inside of the theater or inside the auditorium, listening to these composers actually play this classical music, this seems to be the best way to listen to classical music from a digital perspective. I haven't seen anybody else do anything like this. So if you are a music lover that listens to classical music, then this is going to be the application for you because it's easy to browse, easy to find what you need to find. It plays it in the right tone. It plays it in the right kind of frequency. And at the end of the day, this is gonna be the biggest library of classical music on the internet right now. And it's nice that it comes included with your Apple Music subscription already. But that is gonna do for this video, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully you guys are downloading Apple Music classical because I'm going to link it down below if you guys do want to check it out and actually just start playing with some music because you'd be surprised what falls under the classical kind of music genre because there's a lot of classical music that might have been played in some of your favorite movies as well that you might not realize but that's going to do it if you made it to the end leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end and if you guys want to watch more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos click on one of these right here but until next time I'm Fernando and I'm out of here everybody peace